Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I'm going to be talking about the premium camos available since the Aftermath expansion, how to get them, if they're worth it, uh, and uh, show you just like what they look like, you know, see what you're missing out on if you don't have them yet. Decide for yourself if you want to get them. Now here I've got the digital woodland camo for the LSAT machine gun. To get this it's pretty straightforward. You need 100 kills with the LSAT, 15 suppression ribbons which you'll get with any class, and then 25 mortar kills. The easiest way to get those mortar kills I find are playing some uh, clustered rush maps or conquest maps. You'll find on rush maps that a lot of the areas are sort of off limits for placing mortars, but on rush maps like uh, Grand Bazaar or Epicenter, you can really rack up mortar kills pretty quickly. It didn't take me too long to get these. wasn't the most fun thing on the world, but uh, you know, if you if you're interested in this digital woodland camo, then that's what you got to do. Sadly, uh, the LSAT isn't a great machine gun overall, so you're really not going to probably be using it that much. Also, since it's a woodland camo. Uh, you're only going to get a real camouflage benefit by playing it on forest maps or jungly maps, something like that. Uh, and in Battlefield, most of the maps are kind of more desert themed. So uh, ultimately, I don't think you'll have the most use for this camo, but this is what it looks like if you decide you want to use it. Next up, we have the L85A2 Burkett camo. To get this camo, you need 100 kills with the L85A2. 50 headshots with the L85A2 and 15 assault ribbons, uh, which are pretty easy to get overall. You know, it's straightforward. You just need to use the L85A2 a bit and you'll end up getting your achievements. You know, you'll get the 100 kills probably much quicker than you get the 50 headshots and then you'll probably have to get another few hundred kills depending on your accuracy to get those remaining headshots. It takes time, but at least it's a fun objective to try and get. And the Burkut camo is pretty cool looking. Again, it's very foresty themed, so you're going to want to try and use it on forest maps, or if you just like the look of it, use it on desert maps or whatever. Personally, I think the standard camo look for the L85A2, or even the desert camo that's available for the L85A2, uh, look a bit better, and they say sort of uh, neutralize the gun a bit better if you are trying to actually blend in more, reduce your contrast. You'll probably get better results with the default camo on the gun or the desert camo for the gun. Next up, we have the Burkut camo again, but this time it's for the UMP45. Now to get this camo is pretty fun. All you have to do is get 50 kills with the assault class, then 50 kills with the support class, 50 kills with engineer, and 50 kills with recon. Straightforward, easy to do, takes a while because it's about 200 kills in total. If you want to do it as fast as possible, I'd recommend something like Team Deathmatch. It doesn't really matter what map you play on, as long as there's baddies. Uh, because the UMP45 is really ineffective at long range, you might want to try and get your kills in a close quarter Team Deathmatch map. No Shark Canals will be real easy to bang out all your kills in no time at all. Again, it's a foresty camo, so it's probably not going to be that useful in general. I also find it kind of funny because the UMP45 seems to be much more suited for urban combat, close quarter combat, both uh, in real life and reflected in the stats of this gun. So needing some sort of jungly foresty camo for this weapon, uh, I find like being highly unlikely. It does look kind of cool, but ultimately it's just going to be an aesthetic change, probably something that doesn't actually help you out too much in the actual game itself. On a side note, if you're really trying to get the best use out of your UMP45, I recommend a suppressor and laser sight. It's really going to let you hip fire this thing and stay off the minimap. Ultimately, I'm not crazy about this gun, but if you're looking for something that's kind of stealthy and very powerful in close quarter combat, then this setup works really well. Moving along, we have the MTAR Woodland Oak Camo. Now to get this camo, you need 100 kills with the MTAR. You need 15 anti-vehicular ribbons. This isn't too hard to do. You just got to play a bunch of conquest maps with some vehicles, blow them up. Uh, it, in fact, you don't even have to blow them up with RPGs. You can blow them up with other vehicles. You just need anti-vehicular ribbons. Uh, pretty easy to do if you like to play in vehicles. Uh, it could take you a little bit longer if you're going the RPG route. Now here's the annoying requirement for getting this camo. You need to destroy 10 pieces of enemy equipment with an EOD bot. 
Now, I would not recommend driving an EOD bot around looking for equipment. The easiest way to do this is equip your EOD bot on your engineer, run around till you find, say, a spawn beacon or a tugs or an MAV that's even landed somewhere. Put your EOD bot on the ground next to it, use it to destroy the equipment, then just pick it back up again. Driving it around is going to take forever. Uh, and it's probably just gonna get blown up a lot without you destroying any equipment. There's usually a lot of snipers on tank superiority game mode, so if you can go to one of those maps with an EOD bot, you can generally destroy a lot of so flams and spawn beacons. As for the look of the camo itself, I think it looks kinda neat as far as its usefulness. You know, brown is a neutral color. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to blend into an urban environment. The airman camo available for the MTAR would probably neutralize this weapon a bit better. Next up we have the SKS Desert Camo. Now this one was one of the more annoying camos to get. The easy part is 100 kills with the SKS and 15 accuracy ribbons. That's a piece of cake. You just shoot guys, you'll get it. Uh, then the hard part is 25 kill assists with the laser designator. Now you might think, well that's, that can't be too hard, you only need 25. Well, let me assure you that this will take you a long time and you will probably have to recruit some friends for help. Now some people recommended to play Rush on Karg Island and defend and just set up a SoFlam and watch all the guys with Javelin rockets blow up the incoming vehicles that you are laser designating. Well, I would do that except that there's barely any servers, in fact I couldn't find any servers to play on for that game mode. Then I tried tank superiority because other people recommended just setting up a SoFlam in tank superiority and you'll get all your uh, laser designation kill assists. Well I tried that as well and it's pretty hard to do because there's a lot of people just locking onto your SoFlams with their javelins and blowing them up. A lot of people are in those servers trying to get laser designation assists. Uh, and it's very hard to do. Your so flames don't last very long if you're in a tactical game of tank superiority. Ultimately, I ended up recruiting Matimio and playing some larger conquest vehicle heavy maps and just setting up my so flames in good out of the way areas and having Matimio lock on and shoot down vehicles. It ended up taking us over three rounds to get them and I had already gotten some laser designation assists on my own. Here's the big problem with this requirement because uh, it's kind of buggy with laser designators. To get the assist, you have to maintain the lock of your vehicle until it is actually destroyed. And most laser designations end up getting broken before the vehicle is destroyed. So say I laser designate a tank, somebody fires a javelin at it, it drives behind a rock and I no longer have that lock on. But the javelin's already in the air and it hits the tank destroying it you won't get any laser designation assist for that kill. The worst part about this is that about two thirds of your laser designations that end up killing vehicles get broken before the vehicle's destroyed. This is so unbelievably aggravating and I hate the fact that to get one of these camos, uh, the requirement is based on a piece of equipment that is essentially bugged. You should get laser designation kill assist even if your lock is broken before the vehicle is destroyed. So if you actually want to go through all that grueling time just to get this camo, here's what it looks like. It's actually kind of cool looking. It takes the SKS and it makes it blend into desert environments a bit more. Since most of the maps are desert based, it's actually pretty cool and fairly useful. It really does neutralize the gun a little bit more than it was before. So unfortunately, the one camo that seems to actually be somewhat useful is also the most annoying camo to unlock. But if you're like me and you have to unlock everything for every gun, then you're gonna have to go through those stages. And I wish you luck. So for those of you out there who still don't have all the camos unlocked and you're deciding on whether or not they're worth it, I hope this guide helps clarify whether or not you want to make the push for those camos. And hopefully my advice here can help you reduce the amount of time that you need to spend grinding for those gun camos. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate it if you did. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.